host, Marvin Scott. Good morning. Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in this country and the only one among the top ten causes of death that cannot be prevented or cured. Almost five and a half million Americans have the debilitating disease, a staggering 35 million worldwide. That's a figure expected to double over the next 20 years, unless there's a way to stop it. The research for a cure has been elusive, but there have been some encouraging advances in research. The Obama administration has declared Alzheimer's one of the country's biggest health challenges and revealed recently a research plan to attack it, a plan that includes an additional $50 million for for research this year alone. The Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research here in New York is at the forefront of developing ways to attack the disease. It funds the work of Dr. Paul Greengard, who received the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2000. Dr. William Netzer is a part of Dr. Greengard's team at Rockefeller University, and it's a pleasure to welcome you back to PIX11 News Close Up. The Obama administration is in there with another 50 million this year. Is there some promise on the horizon to find a cure for this? Uh, I think so. Uh, the the, the uh, government funding right now is very, very important because uh, there's been a shortage of funds for research recently. And not only do, uh, the res does the research community need more money, but in addition to that, the way this uh, initiative is structured it appears as if uh, uh, they're going to be encouraging cooperation uh, between scientists uh, to an extent that... that of course, you need the money for the research, and one yeah. of the projects the Obama administration will be funding is testing with an insulin, with, with a nasal spray, that sends insulin directly to the brain to attack those cells which cause yeah. Uh, Alzheimer's. Yeah, this is a very interesting uh, possibility and uh, there was a small-scale uh, clinical trial recently uh, which showed some benefit to Alzheimer's patients. Uh, the, the way this works is uh, it's been known for some time that the brain in Alzheimer's has great difficulty utilizing glucose. We use glucose as an energy source. Uh, when this happens in the body, you know, uh, there's a condition known as diabetes. However, uh, the brain is a bit different. Insulin has many other functions in the brain. So the idea here was to get the insulin in the brain without having to inject it in the body, which if you don't have diabetes, you would get sick. Uh, and it's known that uh, if you put something in the nose, uh, it can travel along the nerve roots, the olfactory nerve, which is the nerve that sense, uh, governs the sense of smell, and it'll go directly to the brain. And in our laboratory, we're actually using that uh, technique uh, to not to deliver insulin, but to deliver other types of drugs that normally don't get to the brain in an effort to... Uh, to so this nasal spray delivering insulin directly to the brain shows some promise to, to at least stop the further deterioration of the beta amyloids? Well, I think it's, it's certainly too early to say that. Uh, what it's, it seems to be... What, what the evidence so far is that in a small group of people, over a period of three months, which is very, very short, there did seem to be some benefit in those patients who received this treatment. But quite frankly, no one knows whether this will pan out in, in the long run. So uh, the, the idea now is to, is to have a more substantial trial, meaning more patients uh, extended over a longer period of time. And that's the only way you're really going to know how valuable this might be. Now, at the Fisher Center for uh, Alzheimer's Research, uh, Dr. Greengard and his team, well, you've certainly identified the villain, really, is this beta amyloid, a protein yeah. that deteriorates and, and with age. Yeah. But he's identified a protein that could perhaps attack that and stop the stem, the mm -hmm. advance of that. Yeah. Uh, beta amyloid is a, a toxic substance that... Uh, the brain produces in Alzheimer's. It's actually, all of us produce it all the time and it usually doesn't give us any problems, but in Alzheimer's, it starts killing brain cells and uh, making it difficult for the brain cells to communicate with each other. Uh, one of the goals in the entire Alzheimer's community has been to find drugs that will suppress the production of this protein in the brain. And recently there were some clinical trials with drugs that did just that, but these clinical trials failed no one knows exactly why, but one reason is that, one possible uh, reason is that these drugs had side effects uh, in that not only did they lower beta amyloid, but they uh, uh, inhibited a, a, a pathway or a protein which 
is necessary for survival. So what we've uh, found is, uh, we, a number of years ago, we were working with a drug called Gleevec, which is actually an anti-cancer drug. And we found that this drug could also lower beta amyloid levels, but that it did not stimulate this other path pathway that would lead to this toxic reaction. The problem with the Gleevec is that it just didn't get into the brain. So uh, we wanted to know, uh, well, why did, how did Gleevec lower beta amyloid? And why did it do that without causing this toxic effect? So to make a long story short, we found that there was a protein that the Gleevec interacted with. And this protein lowered beta amyloid, but it did not touch this other uh, pathway. Uh, so the value of this is, is, is that we have a protein which can be a target now for new drugs that could lower beta amyloid, but could do it in a very safe way. Would the numbers of Alzheimer's victims growing by the year, Dr. Netzer, can you offer any optimism, any hope for those who are suffering and the families as well, that there is some drug on the horizon that will at least stem the advancement of Alzheimer's? There are a lot of drugs in clinical development and uh, that are in clinical trials right now. Uh, in Alzheimer's, uh, there's a lot of uh, the cells are lost in the brain. You can't replace those cells. But however, uh, the optimistic part here is that what's not just the cells, but it's the connections between brain cells that are lost. But these can potentially grow back. Now, I'm not saying that there's a drug on the horizon that will stop the Alzheimer's process, in other words, the deterioration. But if there were such a drug, uh, it's possible that the brain might repair itself to some extent. Nobody knows. But this is a hope. This is uh, an aspiration. And this is why we're uh, doing this work. I can't, I don't think anyone can say, if you're suffering from Alzheimer's now, there's going to be a, a miracle drug coming right around the corner. But there may be some uh, useful drugs that could uh, prevent further deterioration that could be available. Is there anything the out there now that for early diagnosis that, that could help this? Uh, what about these supplements like ginkgo biloba for helping for memory? Or now there's a, there was a word uh, out that uh, fish oils could be helpful to help prevent the onset of dementia. And yeah, there, there's some evidence that uh, so, uh, so not well, uh, one of the ingredients in fish oil, which you can get naturally from uh, eating uh, fatty fish. Uh, uh, can lower the risk that one has of developing Alzheimer's. Um, generally, th when these things are tested, you, they're, they're, uh, you focus on one, uh, one uh, particular compound, one particular nutrient. Uh, no one really knows if you, what would happen if you combine these nutrients with other nutrients. So w we really can't say that, that there's a way of preventing Alzheimer's. There it actually. We, we think There's that no magic bullet. No, but we, it, actually there is, well, to a certain extent there is. Uh, intellectual activity, thinking, uh, working. Uh, uh, Doing crossword puzzles? Uh, perhaps. Uh, uh, stimulates the brain and uh, may actually lower the risk of developing Alzheimer's or delay it for some time. Um, all of the risk factors for cardiovascular disease, like high cholesterol, um, uh, smoking, uh, uh, sedentary lifestyle are also risk factors for Alzheimer's. And it's believed that if you can live a heart healthy life, in other words, uh, lower your cholesterol, stop smoking, get more exercise, get intellectual stimulation, that many people can actually prevent or delay the onset of Alzheimer's. Now, a goal of those who treat Alzheimer's and dementia has long been early early yeah. diagnosis. Are there tests available to determine whether one is going to develop Alzheimer's? There are no tests available currently that a healthy person can take uh, that will tell you that that person is going to develop Alzheimer's. There are experimental tests where the beta amyloid is measured in the uh, cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid that, in, that bathes the brain. And uh, they found that if the, a certain type of amyloid goes down very quickly, that it's likely that that person will get Alzheimer's within the next two or three years. Uh, if you have um, a, a specific gene which is very rare then, uh, that causes Alzheimer's, then you can say, yes, this person will get Alzheimer's. Isn't there a simple test? I thought you had one over at the, the Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research uh, that can 
test of brain function and kind of give you some telltale indication? Well, there are many uh, cognitive tests uh, behav and behavioral tests that uh, neurologists have been using for some time that will uh, detect uh, very early dementia or a condition known as mild cognitive impairment, which is believed to be a pre-dementia state. Uh, uh, many people who have this will eventually go on to develop Alzheimer's, not everyone. Uh, but uh, it's the, it increases the risk dramatically of developing Alzheimer's. And if someone has this condition, uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, in terms of the diagnosis. It sounds like there is some progress, but still a long way to go. There's a long way to go, but the, uh, the important thing is that we know so much more today than we did even two years ago. And the trials, I mean, there's, a, for example, a, pre a, prevent a, a trial concerning the prevention of Alzheimer's that the government is partially funding and, an, and a, comp a private company is also funding in Colombia. Uh, there's a group of people in Colombia, an extended family, which have a gene that causes Alzheimer's, and it, they get it in their 30s and 40s. They have the gene. If a person has the gene, they will get Alzheimer's. So what they're doing is they're taking these people and by their age, they're estimating when they will get Alzheimer's. And let's say they're estimated to get it in five years. They're giving them a new drug which will take a, lower the beta amyloid and, yeah, and seeing if that will prevent or delay the... As we wrap this up, yeah. just want to give the website that you have at the Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research Foundation for more information. ALZ um, info, that's ALZ info, one word, dot org. And uh, it's a pretty good website. It tells about our research at the Rockefeller University in Paul Greengar's lab, and it tells about Alzheimer's in general. Dr. William Netzer, thank you so much. Thank you. Most informative. We're going to take a break. we come back, we're going to talk about illegal immigration and take a look at a really remarkable new documentary. <laughs>